And so with worship, what we need to develop is a mindset that says, not what can I get from God, but what can I give to Him? Hello and welcome back to the Worship Devotional. I'm John and this week we're going to start looking at what worship is. Last week we learned that worship is when we give God joy and when he receives joy he gives us fullness of joy. So there's this exchange of joy and pleasure that happens when we worship God. So we need to know what worship is. Again John 4:23 says he is seeking worshipers, true worshipers. So we need to figure out how to become worshipers. So is worship singing? Is it dancing? Is it bowing? There's lots of words in the Old Testament that, that were translated to worship or praise, and that's what they were. It was singing or dancing or bowing. Lots of different things that were translated to mean worship. And so instead of picking apart all of those different words, we're going to look at this as a, a big umbrella and everything that falls into the category of worship. We're going to look for that definition and it's in the scriptures. It's Romans 12, 1. It says, Therefore I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice, acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Sacrifice. That is the key word there. All of those other things, whether dancing or singing, bowing down, they all fall into this category of sacrifice. They cost me something. And so with worship, what we need to develop is a mindset that says, not what can I get from God, but what can I give to Him? In the scriptures, David is considered a man after God's own heart. Acts 13, 22 says this, and this is quoting God, I have found David, the son of Jesse, a man after my heart who will do all my will. David was God's chosen person to be king over Israel. And then his descendant, his descendants came down and Jesus was of the line of David. All right, this is who God picked and the qualifier was he was a man after his heart. What made David a man after God's own heart? How did he get there? We saw many different things that describe that. He was a warrior. He was just an incredible fighter. He was a mighty dancer. And he wrote the Psalms. But what is it that, that caused him to become this man after God's own heart? I think that it was his understanding of sacrifice. Let's take a look in 2 Samuel. There's this story where the children of Israel are being punished uh, by God, and David makes a sacrifice to God. And he wants to use this property owned by a man named Arana. And Arana says, I'll give the property to the king. You don't have to buy it. And this is David's response. He says to Arana, no, I will surely buy it from you for a price, for I will not offer burnt offerings to the Lord my God, which cost me nothing. So right there, we see David's understanding of sacrifice. And it should be self-evident that sacrifice means it costs something. But we can be consumers so easily. We can come to church and say, man, I hope the band plays my favorite song. And I hope that the coffee's hot, you know, and, and we get this consumer mindset and we're actually supposed to be lavishing things that cost something for us onto God. That's, that is the essence of worship, is shifting our mindset from what do I get from God to what can I give him? Listen to this, Hebrews 13, 15, through him then. Let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that give thanks to his name. 
This concept of worship and sacrifice really speaks to uh, the idea of dying to self. This is where it begins. It begins in the secret place, in your private worship, in corporate worship. This is where the songs are replaced. There's something greater happening than just singing words or just praying words. But you are offering up things to the Lord that only you can offer. So I, I want to encourage you to shift your focus with worship and not allow yourself to be a consumer and say, what, what is God going to give me today? He's going to give you fullness of joy. But that will be even more increased by the depth of your sacrifice, understanding what you're giving to him and being mindful of what it costs. If he's asking you to do something hard, that's where the sacrifice is. That's where the real worship is. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a good week. If you're watching on YouTube, there's a link right up here to go check out Nothing Else, played by Rick Pino. God bless you. Have a good week.